Van Dye the van listened attentively. For a minute I could hear footsteps. Suddenly it stopped. Asked again. Now the noise receded as if it were going backwards. Sir. Do you have to go up? Wouldn't it be better to turn back? Said Manamekali. Princess. I'm not used to putting my foot in the front. Said Valavarayan. If you catch it, say it's a monkey catch. Didn't their friend Chandramati describe me as a monkey-nosed one time ago? It's a catchy face. Saying this, Vandiyathevan, who was coming behind Manamekali who saw this, tried to overtake her and go ahead. Manamegal tried to block it. Both collided with each other. The lamp in Manamegali's hand fell with a thud. It rolled two or three steps and was extinguished. Then there was darkness on the bumpy pavement. Princess! What have you done like this? Said Valavarayan. Why did you try to outrun me? Said Manamekali. I am not in the habit of leaving women in front of me in danger. Vandiyathevan said. It would be better if you let me know what is normal and what is not normal for them. I will act accordingly. All right, lady. I'll tell you when I have time. Now what without time? Come, let's go back to Nandavana. Sit there and tell me. Go back if you are afraid to come in the dark. What do I fear when a player like them is around? Come back, let's go. What's the point of standing in the way? Saying this, Vandiyadeva, who looked forward, blocked his foot and saw him fall. She held Manamegal so that he wouldn't fall. Sir! There are many hills and ruts on this road. In the dark you cannot find where the steps are and where the level path is. I have walked this way many times. I can see the steps and the turns very well. Therefore, no matter how surly you are, you had better hold my hand and follow me. Otherwise, you will not reach the hunting hall. You will stumble and fall on the way. Said Manamekali. Princess. I will do according to your orders, Vandanam. Vandiyathevan said. In the dark, she grasped one of the arms of Manamegala Valavaria. She came to know that Vandiyadeva's hand was numb. He is not afraid of enemies, he is not afraid of conspirators. Why is he so afraid to hold the hand of this evil woman? That's what she thought. They both walked in silence for some distance. Vandiyathevan often stumbled and fell. Every time Monimegali had to hold his hand tightly to keep him from falling. Thick is the way to hell. Vandiyathevan said. Oko. You've been to hell. Asked Manamegali. I have never been to hell, I have never been to heaven the elders have said. They would have been told by their elders. Vandiyathevan wondered how this woman, who was shy to even come in front of four people until some time ago, became so reticent. The road to hell is dark, how about the road to heaven? Said Manamekali. A single torch may light, a thousand suns may shine. Then I like the way to hell. One sun dazzles the eye. The light of a thousand suns blinds the eye. Said Manamekali. If you take the road to hell, you will end up in hell. Said Valavarayan. If you follow heroes like you, you can go through hell to heaven. Said Manamekali. If you take the hand of a princess like them, hell will become heaven. Vandiyathevan said. He immediately bit his lip and said, Have you said this? Is this girl going to misunderstand something? He worried that. If you see their hands are trembling, you will not think that they are going to heaven. Their bodies are trembling like those who are going to the killing field. Said Manamekali. Princess. At the end of this journey, I have a lot of murder waiting for me, or what? You insist you don't put the foot in front of you? How many murderers are there in the hunting hall? Let there be any number of them, I am not afraid of them. If Gandamaran sees you and me walking into the dark hand in hand like this, that is what I am thinking about. Alas! As long as I live, no harm will come to them from my kinsmen. Half of the dream I see has now come true, 
and half may yet come true. Who has seen it? said Manamekali. At this moment they both stopped in shock when they heard the sound of a door being locked. We've just arrived at the hunting hall. Manamegali said in a soft voice. A little light was visible in the distance. The coming light seemed to grow closer and closer to them. Manamegali left Vandiyadeva's hand and stood a little away. In the next moment, Itumpankari appeared before them with a lamp in one hand and a sharp knife with a twisted design in the other. When he saw them, he stood as if stunned by wonder. But both of them came to know that he was disguising himself as such. Mother, Sir. What is this? You set out alone like this in this darkness? Will you not bring a lamp if you tell the slave? Where did you set out? He asked. I Tumbangkari. Hasn't it been reported that the Malayan army is coming? So I set out with Prince Valadhu to see if the walls, gates and tunnels are all securely locked. Said Manamekali. Wonderful, mother. That's what I've been seeing. I Tumpankari said. That's what I thought. The lamp we brought fell on the way and went out. We saw some light here. We came up thinking it must be you. Little Master told me to look, so I went and looked. The tunnel is all well and truly blocked up. Shall we go back, Mother? Give me the lamp in your hand and go. I must fetch a weapon from the hunting hall for this prince. His weapon has gone to the hunting ground. Maybe there will be a war, won't it? Yes, madam. War may come. So it is better not to take strangers into the hunting hall. They don't know. I need not say anything. That's true, Carrie. But he's not a stranger. He's a lifelong friend to the little master. And any new relationship will happen. Give up the lamp and go away said Manamekali. I Tumpankari Vanda reluctantly gave the lamp to the princess and left. Vandiyathevan and Manamegala walked up and approached the hunting hall. An owl's voice was heard from somewhere. What is this? How did the owl get inside the palace? Manamegali said in surprise. Maybe the dead owl in the hunting hall has come back to life, or what? Didn't the dead monkey come back to life when he saw the princess once? Vandiyathevan said. The door to the hunting hall was locked from the outside. Manamegali put the key she had brought and opened the lock. Then she opened the door lightly. Both entered. At first, all around them for a while were dead elephants, bears, tigers, deer, crocodiles, hawks, owls, the hideous bodies of these. Holding up the lamp and looking closely, I could see behind the animals some human figures, half hidden and half unhidden. Then the door of the hunting hall which they had opened was slammed shut. Vandiyathevan looked back to find out who was slamming the door so hard. At the same moment he was violently grabbed from behind and thrown. One time he went in front of the tailless monkey he was hiding behind and bumped into it. Two arms gripped him tightly. It was only then that he got to know very well and experientially how painful the monkey grip was. Efforts to retrieve the knife from his half were of little avail. Beyond this he could never return. The monkey's hands, or two human hands that came along with the monkey's hands, held him so tightly. Two more hands unsheathed the knife from his waist. Oh! The knife was extended towards the chest of Manamekali who ran to him screaming in terror. Don't make a noise, if you stay still for a while if you listen to us there's no danger to either of your lives, if you make a noise you'll both lose your lives. First, this over-preaching young man will fall dead. Said a voice. Vandiyadevan knew that it was Ravidasan's voice. Princess. Be quiet. Let's hear what these people are saying and why they're here. Vandiyadevan said.